Hey everybody, I'm here with Tom Fisher with Malarkey uh, Roofing Products. Um, Tom uh, is a manufacturer's representative. Um, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about the actual product because there's so many different shingles out there in the market and it's really tough, I think, to stand out. I know that you guys, I'll let you speak on it, are innovators in this industry from what I understand and what I've gathered. But I wanted you to touch on the actual shingles, what people should be looking for when they're out there uh, trying to determine which shingle is the right fit for their roof and maybe why they would go with a malarkey roofing shingle. Perfect. You know, I like to tell people that malarkey is something that will really set you apart as a contractor. So we all know that we're in a commodity business, um, but this is something that sets you apart because malarkey does things differently than our competitors from our very best shingle all the way down to our most reasonably priced shingle. We use a technology that the entire industry recognizes as better. Um, so we rubberize all of our asphalt with polymers to increase different attributes on the roof. So um, from the way it walks, to the way it holds granules, to the way it handles impacts, and its flexibility is all influenced by the polymers that we put into the product. Now, a cool thing that I'm very proud of with Malarkey, if you can see this picture behind me of the landfill, um, Every time you put a Malarkey roof on your house, I think the average roof is about 25, 30 squares. You're gonna take about five and a half tires and 2000 single use plastics like water bottles, and you're gonna divert that from going to a landfill. So we source some of those rubber polymers that we make your roof with, with items that we divert from landfills. Um, and I'm also incredibly proud. Malarkey is the only shingle in the industry that uh, has three M's smog reducing granules. So this is a granule that is on here. You can't tell which one it is, um, but it, it is a photocatalytic granule. So I liken it to a catalytic converter on a car, right? So it heats up and it cleans those gases that come through. So this works the same way. The sun heats it up. This releases a free radical that then binds to greenhouse gases. So that same roof that diverted those products from the landfill, that's gonna be equivalent to about two and a half fully mature trees for reducing greenhouse gases in the environment. Now you're from Chicago, I'm from Chicago. If you look at the uh, EPA map, we're a pretty little red hot spot for smog with all of our traffic and, and production that goes on in the area. So this is something I really care about. Um, I wish more manufacturers would do it. I'm not sure why they don't, but um, I'm really proud to work for a company that, that does that. And, and I'm really proud to help people get a better quality product on their roof. It's gonna last longer. It's gonna stay out of a landfill longer. It's gonna divert products from a landfill and you're doing something good for the environment at the exact same time. That's awesome. So what would you say is like the biggest difference between, cause these are architectural shingles that we're looking at here. What would you say is the key difference between uh, the polymer based shingle and an asphalt shingle? So just to put it in very easy terms to understand, this is an, a younger piece of asphalt than you would get if you would buy what we call an oxidized asphalt shingle. So oxidation is the process that manufacturers use to raise the softening point of asphalt to make it usable as roofing. So the softening point of asphalt is about 120 degrees. Your average roof temperature in Chicago, Illinois, if it's vented correctly, is between 160 and 170. So this asphalt would just roll right off the roof down into the gutter, it would be unusable as roofing. So you have two options to harden it up to make it usable. Oxidation, which is a very polluting process. It's a very dirty process. That um, ages the asphalt and it makes it harder, but it makes it brittle. That's why sometimes granules come off of a shingle easy. Now, if you feel these shingles here, this is younger asphalt. This really locks onto these granules in place. It is very hard to take a granule off of a malarkey shingle. And this isn't just better for the homeowner. It's better for the contractor because when your guys are walking around and granules are coming off that roof, that, work, that roof is a working substrate. It's your work area. And when the granules stay on the shingle better, it's a safer environment for your guys to work on. The benefit for the homeowner is that these granules are the only UV protection that asphalt has. So these granules represent how long your roof is going to last. When these granules start to disappear, and even at times you can't see the granule loss from the ground. You may be looking at your roof, you can't see the granule loss from the ground, but it's there and that UV rays from the sun are getting through to your roof and it is, it is going to win. It is a matter of time. Um, that's why you know, we encourage uh, roof inspections, even if you think you may not have damage, but your roof could be much closer to being done than you realize because once those granules come off, like I said, it's just tick tock. It's, it's gonna go. Awesome. So how would you say, 
like a, I know there's a lot of different warranties out there and everyone has their own opinion as far as how warranties work and how they're marketed. What would you say is the key difference or how should a person pay attention to the warranties or what should they look for in a manufacturer to know that it's a quality product? I think it's really important in our industry especially to remember that a warranty, and I'm going to quote Greg Malarkey, um, he will tell you that a warranty tells you what a company will do, not what a product will do. So one of the things I like to point to is the uh, IBHS report. So that's the Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety. Now they put a report out about impact resistant shingles and how they hold up. I'm really proud that Malarkey actually has two different shingles that have made that report. We're hoping to have probably three on the next one um, that, that score very well for them to recommend, an insurance company to recommend it go on your home, right? Because they're trying to mitigate loss. They're trying to keep claims down. Right. Um, keep their book of business clean. So with warranties, you buy a lifetime warranty, a hailstorm rolls through, you're getting a new roof in seven years. Okay. Now we also have a limited lifetime warranty. Our warranties are very similarly written to others in the industry. But what we offer is the peace of mind that if a hail ball would hit this shingle, now there's no such thing as a hail proof shingle, but most likely this shingle is going to make it through a hailstorm. Um, I was talking to a contractor here yesterday who switched to Malarkey last year and they had an incredible hailstorm this year, and they didn't have to go back and replace one roof that they installed Malarkey because of the polymer modified asphalt and the impact resistant qualities that that creates. Awesome. And then um, I guess, so now we have a shingle that's pretty much scuff proof. It's got the asphalt blocked by the, uh, the, the granules, which obviously make it beautiful, but at the same time prevent anything from damaging the, the actual asphalt underneath there. Um, I guess the, the question I have is, if I were to install this roof, my understanding is that the carriers or the insurance companies out there uh, may offer some kind of incentives uh, for installing a class, a certain type of class of shingles. Do you know what how that works generally and maybe not specifically to each insurance company? Yeah, so it's hard to lock it down in a blanket statement. Um, the insurance companies, most of them are offering a discount if it is a polymer modified impact resistant shingle. So back in the days they were making impact resistant shingles, um, the industry's kind of getting away from it, but they would be reinforced from the back. Mm -hmm. So what would happen is a hailstorm would come through and maybe the shingle wouldn't break, but it still lost those granules. And like we said, once the granules are gone, your roof is a ticking time bomb on your house. Um, so there's still an insurance claim. So specifically, most insurance companies require that it not only have an impact rating, but that it has a certain polymer in it. Uh, so I've seen some different writing on that. I, I probably need to brush up a little bit. But in different areas of the country, there are different levels of rebate. In the Chicago area, in the St. Louis area, where I'm from originally, it's usually around 6 or 7% for a class 3, and then 7 or 8% for a class 4. So if your average homeowner policy is probably going to be up to $150 soon on average per month, you're talking about $10 off a month to go with a very reasonably priced product that goes on your home. So it's a nice little kicker. Awesome. Thanks so much, Tom. I appreciate hey, no it. No problem. Appreciate you.